My name is Steve Barwick. I'm the city manager in Aspen, and uh, we've been using Vesture yet for about a decade now. And it's become the heart and core of our strategic planning, both as a staff and with the city council. It's done a number of, of very valuable things for us. Uh, probably the biggest of which is focusing. We had many strategic planning efforts with city council before this. Sometimes we came up with as many as 42 goals in a year. And city council would never allow us to prioritize. Right. So instead of getting 42 things done, we got nothing done. Um, best year yet has allowed us to focus on 10 and 10 real goals. Right. 10 goals that are connected to the heart and soul of who we are and where we want to go as a community and get city council focused on that. And then staff has our monthly meetings where we check in on what are the, the monthly goals that we have to do to get there at the end of the year and then quarterly milestones. And it's just worked out really well. It creates a good dialogue each and every month for the management team. For the city and for my team, it's, it's a method that we've become familiar, familiar with. It's, um, it's not frightening at all. Uh, I think, you know, the ways I would approach a retreat in the past would be kind of bracing for the worst or um, just a, kind of a lot of anxiety there, honestly. Um, and, and then, again, you know, a week after it, I couldn't tell you one thing that happened other than maybe the lunch was really good, like, like the lunch. Um, so this is a way to just keep that alive and to, and to kind of continuously come back to what is what is important and um, kind of systematically ha how do we move this thing forward just incrementally and um, what well, things have to change I mean things change right new things come in some sort of dynamic is introduced uh, and you kind of switch up the strategy you try something it didn't work you try something else it did great, let's move forward, and, and so it's it's a platform for that conversation so that the goal itself isn't static. Uh, I mean, even I mean, even the goal can change, right, as you, as you move forward, um, but certainly the, the kind of the tactical and strategic um, operational part of it, I mean, that's, that's always changing, there's always a dynamic there, um, and I, it's a good platform for that conversation. As a set of ideas, facts that you're laying down, and you build on that in the next conversation, and the next conversation after that, until you get down to finding these goal areas, and it's like, well, of course that's the right goal, or goal area, because of all that we've discussed before, all of that knowledge, information, conclusion making leads to, I got to do these things, um, and an organization that, that not only picks good things to do, but knows why I'm picking these things as opposed to all these other things is one that sets itself up for success. I, you know, speaking from my own point of view, I, I enjoy being able to speak kind of openly and freely about my own performance, about um, other people's experience, either positive or negative, about how I feel the team did overall in a way that is solely for the purpose of improving mm -hmm. and, and not for um, personal gain or to put someone down or to, to speak um, kind of out of school or any, any of those things, just literally to, for the benefit of the organization. It, it's a program that starts with the basics of the values of the community. What's important? What are the threats? What are the opportunities? And then how do you translate that into action? And that's been very useful for us. It's, it has kept us on track for a long time. And I think for other governments, it's a pretty low cost way of doing it. And it's one that's sustainable over time. Um, and I think you'll find, anybody will find, they can make it work for themselves. They can tailor it to whatever they need it to be. But they've got to do strategic planning. In smaller communities, it's hard to do that. Focusing on the what are the things that are really important to me? Um, so if I were going to accomplish some one thing over the next year, 
what would that be? Or, heck, if I want to accomplish one thing over the weekend, what would that be? Um, so it, that can be useful um, just in the conversation um, between my wife and I. I mean, what are, we, what are we getting done this weekend? Well, as you said, I think focus is probably the biggest key. We're so focused on just kind of plowing forward and, and kind of forget to say, oh, yeah, that, that happened there. It was pretty cool. And I just want to pat myself on the back and have everyone share in that um, celebration. Is, uh, it's kind of cool. So I, I actually really enjoy that. Um, there's not a lot of meetings that I really look forward to. Uh, but that's a meeting I, I do really look forward to. I'd say the biggest surprise was it's been successful enough that we've kept it for a decade. We've been through several others of these, worked with various facilitators and used different systems, and they come and they go. They all have their usefulness, but this one has fit us so well that we've kept it for a decade. That's mm -hmm. that's a big testimonial for us. It's also a meeting that I, I'd like to be prepared for. Um, I mean, it is, it's senior leadership, and uh, I mean, we all kind of want to show up looking good. So, you know, it's it's a meeting that I, I, I spent a little bit of time on before, just making sure I, I can show up well for myself. You know, here are the things that I said I was going to do, and here's how I performed on them. Uh, even if I didn't perform well on them, just to be able to say that authentically and say, well, here's here's what happened or here's what's going on, here's the things that, here's where I stumbled, or here's the thing that I just totally forgot that I had, but I'm owning it and talking about how to move forward. And, and uh, so I, it's, it's a meeting that I, not only do I look forward to it, but I also want to make sure that I'm prepared for it and know how to show up um, myself. The program works very well for it. It's simple, it's basic. Um, there's not a lot of fancy jargon, and you don't have to you don't have to agree with each other, but in the end, um, coming up with ten strategic goals are very important, and then working it into the monthly work program for the organization. It's key. Not even be a kind of backup person on the goal, but it's important to the overall organization. You have something to offer in terms of how to move something forward, even if it's just kind of giving some query on to, well, have you, you know, what happened here, or have you tried this, or it, just um, kind of assisting uh, the organization through it. I, I think it's been useful there, uh, and it's and it's helped create a real um, positive working uh, environment. The thing that's embedded in the, in the software that, that we've used with Best Year yet, is this whole notion of, of plan execution and accountability for execution. All kinds of organizations develop a strategic plan. Most of them go sit on a shelf. Uh, you hope somebody does something. But in the case of Best Year Yet, you've got an annual goal that needs to be broken down into quarterly milestones that gets further divided up into monthly goals that are going to carry out these things if we do these things for three months, then the quarterly milestone is hit, and we can continue on. And then the conversations that are part of the plan review session and in the monthly meeting, you know, ask yourselves, well, this was what we planned to do. This is what we actually did. What do we need to do to recover from what we didn't do uh, and get ourselves prepared to get back on track? Um, and so it, it not only... Builds account it builds accountability. It says to everyone in the organization, I've got to come to the meeting this month and explain what I did or did not do. Um, and that's the way accountability creates a sort of momentum towards things actually occurring. The safe environment that we've created, uh, it really creates a platform for real authentic discussion, conversation, listening, one of the things that has evolved is that when we enter into that room, it's it's we're we're all equals. That the org chart kind of goes away. There there is there's none of that kind of uh, kind of top down structural stuff that you have to behave to. And it 
it's it's really an environment where um, we talk about what worked, what didn't go so well, what can we learn from that, how do we move forward, um, and it has, I, I mean, again, it's really it's helped me both personally and professionally. I think it's it's helped the organization tremendously. It has um, really helped the leadership team, and it, it in a way, I think it's infused its way through the organization, through the departments, uh, in creating an environment where you can have conversation where the things that need to be said are said, and they're heard for what they are. 